Hello everyone. Welcome to the very first episode of Professional Software. My name is Bodhruna Sorpi and I'm very excited to introduce to you all our today's speaker who's none other than our very own Dr. Nafisa Islam ma'am. Dr. Nafisa Islam ma'am is currently an assistant professor in the Department of Chemical Engineering and Poet. She completed her MSc and PhD from North Carolina University. She is currently the lead investigator of the EMBR lab. Dr. Islam has served as a visiting research fellow at the Department of Bioengineering in University of California. She is also the first ever faculty from Poet who has received the early career fellowship from UNESCO host. Dr. Nafisa Islam ma'am serves in several committees for research as well as different educational related activities. She is a subject expert for effect on environment and public health for ICDDRB. She is also head of the self assessment committee at the Department of Chemical Engineering. Her past and present research work has resulted in 23 publications including 6 peer reviewed articles in highly ranked journals. So now without further ado we will turn our time to Dr. Nafisa Islam ma'am and hear from her research experience and career journey so far. Assalamu alaikum and um, thank you Buet Career Club for having me and um, thank you for so, so much nice adjectives. Uh, I agree with the passionate part but being truly accomplished might take a little bit more time. So as a teacher at the university both these roles are equally important. Teaching gives you instant validation <laughs> and you can see the outcome of your teaching almost immediately in the expressions of your students. On the other hand research is also rewarding but you know it takes time you might have to spend weeks months or even years to see the positive outcome of your uh, activities uh, talking about challenges well with teaching the major challenge is that there are so many learning styles of students and also now with the pandemic it's even more difficult to try to reach every student and make sure that they're understanding what we're teaching and Another challenge I would say is the changing mode of technology. That has always been there. And if we don't keep up, we won't be able to keep our students engaged. So, but you know what? This crisis has actually given us uh, an opportunity to explore so many various modes of technology right now. And even post pandemic, we can actually use this to our advantage to get um, our messages across to our students better. Um, challenges in research. So even a few years ago, I would have said that, you know what, we do not have enough manpower, we do not have enough resources, but the research, the research landscape right now in Bangladesh is changing very drastically. Now the major challenge is to actually hold on to the potential of Bangladeshi researchers. There are so many there are so many talented researchers, but they are basically getting brain drained into foreign universities. So we as universities and institutions have to really step up our game to show that you know what we have the resources, come work with us, let's collaborate. We might collaborate with foreign universities, but let's tackle and solve local problems. Yes, definitely this is an emerging problem and basically I am very concerned about urban waste management and I feel that the lack of awareness among general population is one of the major obstacles that we should be tackling and um, the good news of course is that the government is aware of this problem. They are working alongside organizations like World Bank, ADB and also local authorities like ATY, DOE, WASA, city corporations and they are willing to take steps, they are willing to spend resources and it's up to us researchers actually to give them good solutions to tackle the problem. So one of the major things is that you have to separate your pollutants at the source. I mean, even in a single household, you have plastic, you have paper, you have um, electronic wastes, a big emerging pollutant, okay? So, but you know what? All these wastes can actually be turned into resources, value-added resources. Paper can be recycled. 
and um, plastic can be recycled e-waste can be used to harvest expensive precious metals gold platinum and many others so the problem the good news is that we have these things called feriwalas we have bhangaris we actually have a way to separate so that's already in place but the problem is that they take this and they sell it off to other people for much lesser price than they should be selling it and also sometimes they sell it into illegal trade routes so as researchers we should find a way to encourage and incentivize these businesses and keep these resources within bangladesh if we can figure out a way to value add locally then it's going to generate revenue and it's going to stop these pollutants from going into the landfill and into water and land and basically the food chain so that's something we should definitely be thinking about yes definitely stem research did uh, also face lots of uh, obstacles um, because many labs could not run at full capacity and many flights were delayed sometimes your equipment wouldn't come on time sometimes your chemicals wouldn't come on time sometimes other materials wouldn't come on time and sometimes even money wouldn't come on time so those things definitely affected stem and every other research field and another thing i feel is that uh you know a lot of ideas get generated when you have this sort of interactive um meetings or conferences so in the last one and a half years we missed out on that a lot well but at least the positive thing is researchers didn't sit idle thank god for technology thank god for internet thank god for zoom and teams and webex so we did actually have uh, opportunity to collaborate uh, maybe not face to face but a lot of maybe manuscripts were written a lot of proposals maybe were written and um, all that we need now is that the vaccination will come and give us a certain amount of immunity and we can take those ideas and start doing the things that we really want to do so here's hoping for the best okay so that's a two part question so bioengineering is sort of a bigger umbrella under which many disciplines fall but basically when you have engineering principles applied to problems that involve biology that's bioengineering uh, you can have bio medical engineering which is the study of uh, engineering and uh, to create or improve instruments or devices or medical hardware or medical software but all this will be applied in the medical field and on the other hand biochemical engineering involves studying maybe some of the same subjects as biomedical engineering but the applications will be different you will use biological materials you might use cells tissues macromolecules or you might use fermentation and other life cycles but the end goal will be to develop new or improved products or processes just like any chemical engineering and another little thing that i wanted to add is biotechnology this is a separate umbrella bioengineering was one umbrella biotechnology is a separate umbrella where you have more emphasis on the sciences uh, rather than in engineering where you have a little bit more engineering and maths principles well thankfully i never believed in these kinds of generalizations i mean you get to hear things like oh girls can't do this or maybe engineers can't do that there's really no limit if you see yourself if if you if society tries to put you in a box just push the boundaries of the box and try to fit in whatever you like that's what happened with me i liked biology since i was in a levels and i actually put down chemical engineering as my first two choices uh one of the first two choices because i wanted to work some time or the other in biochemical engineering um and as far as trying to get more engineers interested in these fields well representation right once people see that this is possible you will actually start to believe it so the simple idea is to have more webinars or after the post pandemic have more seminars of who 
faculty members, industry personnel who are working in biological, biotechnological or bioengineering fields. So uh, even on the top of my head, I can actually uh, think of many people who are alumni of chemical engineering, but they have worked or are working in Pfizer, Genentech, Precision Biosciences, Abbott Vascular, Bristol Myers, and local like Renata. So you, you can have these talks and people will start understanding that even engineers have a great role to play in biological sciences. So in my opinion, engineering schools everywhere are notoriously similar in teaching and learning. And you, you know what, talent pool is also very similar, say it's in Bangladesh or in North America. Having said that, I think we are a bit behind. You know why? Because when I went to North America, I had to encounter very diverse sort of people. You know, I was this Asian and I had to work with maybe South American people or um, North American people, European people. And everybody had a different take on how they would approach a sort, sort certain problem. And that actually helped me become a more evolved researcher and a thinker and another major difference I would say that is present in North America is that they value non-academic activities and achievements quite a lot and I think that is something that even we should embody and any person who applies for grad school American grad school will tell you that the form actually asks for what co-curricular activities did you do what extracurricular activities did you do and even I uh, practice that by telling my advisees and my students whenever I can, you know what, just don't stay cooped up in your books. Explore the world, do what you love, and that will actually help you become a better researcher. Um, my one advice, don't say I shouldn't take part because I'm not going to win anyway. If you don't take part, there's a 100% chance that you will not win. So another thing is, don't always aim for winning. I mean, a lot of things are sh should be done just for the fun of it and the learning experience and meeting new people and networking. You never know whose eye you might catch. So definitely take part in more international competitions and webinars whenever you can. So I've already talked about the talent pool, like there's no lacking as far as the STEM education quality is concerned and government and other organizations are also ready. They have the resources to fund researchers. So that's not the problem. Then what is lacking? I think one thing is unified leadership. I mean, there are a lot of pockets of research happening in many corners of Bangladesh, but we should really be thinking of a unified goal. There is a bit that we are always focusing on the SDG, but I would like to be strengthened that every researcher is always thinking about a certain goal for the country. And another thing that I have seen that um, in Bangladesh, fundamental research is a bit lacking. This needs to change. Otherwise, you will not get that sort of name and fame in research world. You know, so again, these two can be definitely tackled with depth of understanding that I just talked about. You have to have depth of understanding of what you're doing and you have to groom researchers so that they know what they're doing and why they're doing it. And last of all, I would talk about brain drain, which I already mentioned in another reply. You have to make the prospect of research in Bangladesh attractive. I mean, we don't even have outside of universities, we really don't have any good R&D facilities. So if somebody has gotten a good PhD from a foreign university and they want to work in Bangladesh, their only option is academia and academia not, doesn't necessarily have so many posts. So what will they do? So it's sort of a mixed problem, like intertwined problem. If you don't have researchers, you won't have a research unit institution. But if you don't have research institution, where will the researchers come? So this is something that we need to tackle in very short term. That will really help to put Bangladesh on the research map.
first of all thank you and it was an honor being asked to do this interview and i was actually very pleasantly surprised that you all i mean not surprised i was really happy that you all took the time to research what i do and it was really pleasurable answering questions that was so that are so close to my heart and another thing is that it gave me an opportunity to practice what i preach because i tell my students all the time increase your visibility break out of your shell so today i got an opportunity to do that as far as advice is concerned i really don't know that much about all your activities what i do know is that you carry out or help organize a lot of international uh, events and competitions so that is really good that is something that uh, gives a lot of exposure to current students and definitely keep on doing that and congratulations on carrying out successfully so many international events in the past another piece of advice that i would like to say is sort of out of the box now in buet we don't have anything called a buet career office or a buet career services you know which a lot of international and even national universities do have so i think you can leverage the contacts that you've already made in the past i mean you probably have alumni of your club in very good positions um home and abroad you might even have faculty members who were part of your club so why not make this into a team and formalize it into an actual buet uh, office so that students can get the opportunity to have that uh, career talk with somebody who's also authorized to give them letters of recommendation and letters of um, appreciation and things like that so that's something that you might think about Finally I would like to say that whatever steps you take in the future I am wishing you the best of luck and I am also hoping that you find lots of inspiration and you keep inspiring the students so that they do their best in their careers